everything is in our mind that is why it is said this loka this loka means bhu loka in which we are living it is bound by our mind alone mano moolam idam jagat it is said jagat means ja gat that which is which comes and that which goes morning comes goes night comes goes childhood comes goes youth comes goes middle age comes and goes old age comes and goes everybody comes and goes away that is the nature of this world which is anityam ashashvatam which is not permanent it's only temporary mind is a faculty given to us we all have a body we know hands legs eyes ears nose and all the internal organs brain everything is a part of this body only it's like the hardware a computer hardware it has got all its parts the cpu the mouse the keyboard the monitor however there is a software a program that runs this whole system without the software this hardware won't run so consider that software as your mind can you touch the software you can touch the cd on which the software has been embedded but can you really touch the knowledge of that software you cannot and all that it is is all in binary code 010101 the computer understands only the language of binary sat or asat either it is zero or is it it is one with the combination of this sat and asat the zero and one the existent and the non existent the whole of the program of software has been designed so that the computer understands whatever the software is trying to tell and accordingly carries out the instructions through the various parts the screen comes on shows up whatever video or picture or the excel sheet or a powerpoint or a word document whatever you are trying to use then using the other parts like the keyboard mouse and there is other things that are associated you utilize the services of the computer but behind the computer is the mind like the software it is the mind behind this body which is the hardware the software is the mind now we have to understand what is mind mind has four components manas buddhi chitta ahankara manas is nothing but a collection of sankalpa vikalpa all kinds of thoughts put together is called mind so when you have no thought whatsoever you have totally blank at that point of time mind is zero otherwise it is one zero one zero one zero one this is the combination it goes so mind goes absolutely blank blank when you see something shocking you don't know how to react frozen mind goes blank so all these thoughts that come and go all are nothing but mind so mind is not a physical object it's just the collection of all the thoughts good thoughts bad thoughts pure thoughts impure thoughts happy thoughts sad thoughts all thoughts put together is mind now what else is there I said then there is a buddhi now buddhi means that ability to discriminate analyze and come to a decision that is buddhi for example you go you have put your hand in the fire last time and got your finger burnt next time you see fire are you going to put your hand into the fire again if your buddhi is functioning working it will tell you that is fire don't you put your hand into it again last time it got burnt this time you should not do this 
So buddhi tells that don't or do. So this is the idea of buddhi. It can discriminate, it can analyze. It's like the algorithm in the software which takes care of decision making. And beyond, one buddhi derives this analysis from where? It has a memory. We all have memory, the computer has a memory. In the memory there is everything stored there. Whatever the uh, things have been performed and saved, all the things are saved in the computer's memory. There is a quick memory, random access memory, they call, us, uh, call it RAM, which immediately comes to a rescue, temporarily stored there. And then there is a deeper memory where everything else is stored. And you have to recall it from those storage spaces whenever you want to utilize. You have saved a file. You must know where the file is saved. And go to that folder file, open that folder and take out the file and use it again. Modify it, edit it, forward it, whichever way. So this storage in us, there is a fac facility of storage called buddhi. Now how are all these things stored in the computer? If you open the hardware, can you see your files? If you break it open, where is my PPT? Nothing is there, you can't see anything. All that is stored as a soft program. In the same combination of Sat Asat, binary, zero and one. Entire thing is stored that way. And whenever you recall that, you put the path, whatever is required, from this file, in this drive, to this folder, and this file, and it comes up. So this is our Chitta, the storage, the memory is called Chitta. Where all that we have done ever, ever since we were born, not in this birth, from the beginning, everything is stored there. You can only imagine how many tera, giga, I don't know what bytes it must be, how much storage is that. Every single memory ever since we have had is stored. But then you will say, Swami, I can't even remember what I studied yesterday. You are saying everything is stored from ages. No, no, you, whatever you studied yesterday, you didn't store it. You didn't, you forgot to save the file. And therefore, it is not there. But whenever our buddhi has worked on chitta, our mind has taken care that the impression is stored, it is there. It is there and stored. When you don't save it, then it is gone. Like a man whose mind does not work in, in the sense he has some psychological issues, can't remember things, or people suffering from dementia, they can't remember things because that has been, that is getting deleted. There is some kind of virus that has crept into the system and keeps deleting files. That is a disease, that is a virus. Whereas mostly all that we do, think, see, touch, taste, smell, hear and undergo in our lives, everything is somehow or the other getting stored in our chitta. Some are in the RAM though it comes quickly, some are deep down in the hardware or in another you know, hard disk or whatever of the computer, it is stored there. And then, one more aspect of mind is ahankara. What is ahankara? Identification. That this computer, you, when you open the computer, it remembers whose computer it is. If it wants a name, a date, a country to which it belongs, and things like that. So you, you give some identification to the computer and a password, admin password or a user password. All this is an identification to that computer that this computer belongs to the science department and further it belongs to the principal and principal can use it because he has the password and whenever a computer opens it says welcome principal. So it remembers its identity. If you take the computer and put it into warden's room, still it will say, welcome principal. It won't be able to recognize, I have shifted to warden's room now, unless you go and feed it again, telling now you are no more the principal's computer, principal has got a new computer, now this is the warden's computer. So it should say, hello warden, when it comes. It doesn't remember of its own, it has been, some program has been fed and it identifies itself with that. that. Same way is this body, which is the hardware, with all the CPU is the brain and everything, everything else is there, which is working in different parts. And then we have the software called mind, which has four aspects, the manas, all the thoughts put together, all the programs, everything put together is called mind. 
but it also has the analytical ability which is called buddhi it has memory which is called chitta and it is also called identification which is called ahankara now these four things are the ones which make our body do whatever we do as the mind thinks i must have food now now what will the buddhi tell if you sit here you are not going to get food also food will come at 12:15 or 12:30 even if you desire now you cannot get it so it will tell the body calm down food will not come till 12:15 so wait and when 12:15 happens the mind will tell the body yes time to get up then buddhi will tell the mind it's 12:15 and it has the memory what is the memory that if you go straight and then you take a left and then you take a right and further right that's where your hostel is in the hostel you don't go away to bathroom to have food you go and go to prayer hall you go to dining hall only to have food that memory is there where to go for food and how to go about how to sit behave and eat your food you have all the memories through practice so chitta is being used by buddhi to direct the body and then when you go to dining hall if somebody asks who are you then you will tell i am so and so identification so all these are all the time functioning within us the mind takes care of everything else a good mind a pure mind has pure thoughts pure intentions pure actions everything starts with thought so a thought reap a reap an action so an action reap a tendency so a tendency reap a habit so a habit reap a character so a character reap a destiny everything starts with the seed of thought so good mind which good thoughts are there it will have good buddhi it will have good memories because it's only done good to everyone it has received good from everyone it has good memories and its actions are also always oriented in a good way now how do i get a good mind good mind comes from good company that is why i said the other day tyaja durjana samsargam give up the company of those who are worldly who have bad mind who are evil minded people bhaja sadhu samagamam join the company of the noble good people so that you also develop good habits from them kuru punya mahoratram engage yourself in good actions punyam does not mean going and doing charity outside or doing pujas just the day to day conduct of your life how do you behave with people around you should be good that is punyam paropakaraya punyaya papaya parapidanam helping anybody and doing anything that will be useful to others is punyam doing anything that is going to be harmful to others hurts others is papa so punyam kuru punya mahoratram day and night you should do punyam it means even when you are sleeping in your dream also you should not will bad for others you should not develop ill bad thoughts or wrong thoughts even in your dream you should not so aho ratram morning and night do good and smara nityam anityatam remember what is real what is unreal now you know by now you have got some idea what is real that which comes and does not disappear is real which stays forever what is unreal which comes and goes your childhood was unreal your youth is unreal your old age will be unreal you are real you don't go away you were there in the body of the baby you are there in the body of the teenager you are there in the body of the youth you alone are there in the body of the middle age man again old man or a woman and finally in the dead body also whose body identification is with you only so something is there which does not go whereas the other things go till the body is there we understand that i am there my identification with this body that i my name is so and so is there as a child also if teacher asks i will tell the same name if i grow up and somebody asks me my friends ask i will tell the same name if i grow and marry my relatives ask i will tell the same name if i work in an organization and they ask i will tell the same name and even when i die my death certificate will carry the same name name of mine the identification with that particular being does not change the being changes in many ways it's a small infant can't walk to a boy who runs to a young man who's strong and able able to an old man who's becoming fragile and weak to a dead man who cannot move all these are movements and changes in the 
external body, but the person who is inside, who is identifying himself with this body, remains. Nachiketa's question is, what happens after this body dies? Do I die with the body? So you will say, no, of course not, you know you can go to heaven. But heaven is temporary. I may live for thousands of years there, but I must come back again into another body, that is the rule. If a computer crashes, you shift all the data, memory to next computer. Don't you do that if your computer crashes or phone crashes? Somehow you retrieve all the data and pass it on to the next hardware, next phone. Similarly, the whole software, this mana, buddhi, chitta, hankara, collectively passes on to a next body. The entire data is retrieved from this and then it is passed on to the next hardware, next computer, next phone. Likewise, this mana collects all buddhi, chitta, ahankara and carries on and joins the next computer. And that is how life goes on after one computer to the other, as in when computers become old, obsolete, crash, start, uh, cannot function, the data keeps moving. The software keeps moving. Maybe some upgrades also happen from a very bad person, you have become a little better person. Or downgrades can also happen from a good person, you have become bad person. Viruses might, might creep in and pollute your data, make your memory the, full of confusion. All this is possible. So you have to keep yourself very clean and pure. Else whatever you have learned will go for a toss. So you have to remember that this is how the body and the mind moves. Now beyond the body and the mind, only the mind and body will function. The computer and the software will function if there is electricity. If there is no electricity, can a computer function? Absolutely not. You may say, no, no, we have got UPS. But UPS is electricity only. Storage of electricity, in a battery. But ultimately the reason for why, why the computer works and the software works is because you have electricity. So in a computer lab, there are 30 computers. Are they working with different, different electricities of their own? Or is the same electricity goes through all the computers and makes them active? Which is the truth? Same electricity. Though this computer belongs to the principal, this belongs to the roll number one, that two, three, four, each of the computer is different and they will have different, different items going on. Somebody is doing a PowerPoint, somebody is doing an Excel sheet, somebody is doing a Word document, somebody is simply watching a video or a song. Anything can be happening. Though the effects seen in the different computers are different, according to the computer, hardware, big size screen, small size screen, LCD screen, LED screen, whatever it is. Or it could be different because processing capacity of the computers are different. Some are loading faster, processing faster, some are processing slow. It could also be the quality of other gadgets that are associated with the computer. Some might have a Bluetooth mouse, some might have a wire mouse, some might have a good speaker, some might have a bad speaker. Accordingly, the effect in each computer is seen differently. Some is using PowerPoint, some are using Excel sheets, so they are using different softwares. However, without electricity, none of these will function. Can they? They cannot. But if somebody says, my computer has my own electricity, that is why my, it plays PowerPoint and that's how it works. Your computer has your own electricity. No, it's not true. You might, your computer might have been plugged to an electrical source. You might have your own switch and the plug point. But the reason for the computer to come alive is only the electricity and nothing else. The one electricity only flows through all the computers, makes all the software programs run, makes all the hardware run, and makes everything happen. So it will be foolish to say that my electricity is different from your electricity. In fact, with not in, even in a computer lab, in various computer labs across the world also, they have to agree that everything is run on the same electricity of certain voltage. Nobody can say it's different from each other. Likewise, there is something beyond the mind which energizes all of us, which makes everything work. Until that is there, everything works. But the electricity goes away, everything stops. This electricity is coming, you com compare it with your prana. Prana means your life force. 
What is the difference between a dead body and a alive person? What happens when somebody dies? Body is there but life lives. This life force or prana, note these words, these are all scriptural words, prana is there. This prana alone makes this body function. When the body is functioning, mind is also associated, it is functioning in the body. And prana goes away, the body falls dead and the mind stops functioning there. It is like a computer that has crashed. And then Yama comes, whose computer crashed, let me see. And he says, oh, this fellow crashed today. How old was he? 95 years old, good age to crash. What about his data storage software? Ah, it is there. Okay, let me retrieve all the data. He'll put his own plug point and remove the data. He is he's a data, he's an expert, computer, whatever, the repair person. And immediately retrieves all the data, dumps the computer behind the hardware, which they bury it or burn it or leave it for others to eat, according to their religious traditions. And Yama takes all the data and searches for a new computer. And till the new computer arrives, where is this data kept? It is kept in one of the seven lokas above or the lokas below. Depending on the quality of data and useless data, put it in some corner, that's okay. Very important data, put it in the high quality, high security storage. Like the useless fellow did nothing in his life other than troubling everybody, put him in one of the hells. Good person, very noble person, very kind person, very divine person. Let us keep this data very confidential, very high quality data. Let us put it in a very good co storage, you see. So that it is not lost, it is not damaged. So it's got a heaven to live. But ultimately, whichever heaven or hell this data is lying in, it must go back to another computer because only then it becomes useful. Simply data lying in a corner is of no use. So Yama will find a new computer. Yama's people will find a new computer and go and finally reinstall the entire software and all the data will be transferred to the new computer. And the new computer thinks, I am just born. No, it's not born just now. Body is born, the hardware has come just now. The software has been loaded from the past. And now from there the life of the computer again continues, works for a long time, does good, bad, ugly things and then finally crashes after some time. And then again Yama comes back. Let me take this data and transfer it further to another computer, another body, another family. This way life goes on. So our Yana Chiketa's problem is that yes, my father wants heaven. It's like the high quality data storage unit. But I know he'll come back again to this earth. He'll go back into another computer. I know it. I have observed it carefully. Three days I was not sitting here simply. I was thinking and thinking and thinking about all the things about life. Because why he's thinking so much? He's already dead. So he's now, now wants to know what's further after death. I've heard of heaven, but what about heaven and hell? You go and come back again and again into, the, into earth. So how should I go about further? That is the question. Now there are some religions who don't believe that there are, they believe in heaven and hell, but they don't believe in reincarnation. They don't believe this data is ever transferred. They believe there is only one computer, one software, one data, and once the computer crashes, the data is kept forever to be analyzed finally by God and decided whether to, what to do with this in Pralaya day or on the final day, the, the D day they call it. But Hinduism and Sanatana Dharma does not believe in this. Sanatana Dharma firmly believes that we are born again and again. And with collection of all our previous memories, thoughts, in, in habits, instincts, we are transferred from one body to the other. In between there is a transition time period, which is where we say hell or heaven we go and we are kept there. By whom? By Yama. And therefore we keep changing the bodies. That is the idea of Hinduism. So somebody who was not uh, very convinced about this idea, he said, no, we are only born once. And I heard of a very nice term called YOLO. You only live once. This is the ne next millennial thing, YOLO. You only live once, just enjoy your life. Don't worry about tomorrow. And then what happens? The person who does not, who does not believe in reincarnations and this theory, he met our Paramacharya of Kanchi. 
and he went to Paramacharya and told, I don't think that I believe in this reincarnations. How do you prove that it does occur? And then Paramacharya said, you go around in this Kanchipuram to various maternity homes and find out for yourself how many children were born yesterday and what kind of parents they were born to, how many were healthy and normal, how many were born with some sickness or weaknesses, how many were born in rich families, how many were born in poor families. Just make a list and come back to me. And this person said, that's not a very big deal. I will do it by tomorrow. This person goes with a notebook and makes a list of all the children born the previous day. And whatever, twenty odd children's list, he comes in, gives it to Paramacharya. See, I have got this list. Then Paramacharya asks him, tell me of these, how many were born in rich families? How many were born in poor families? How many were born sick? How many were born healthy? And then he says, these children were born with some ailments. These children are born in very poor family. These were born in happy rich families. These were healthy. Then Paramacharya asks him, according to you, these children are born for the first time. Then why are they born with such differences? Why your God decided that some should suffer by being born in a poor family? Why your God decided that some should be born in rich families? Why your God was unfair to some by giving them ailments and sicknesses? Why was your God kind to somebody, favored them with good health? You say your God loves everyone equally, is impartial. Then why would he think like this about different children who have no done nothing, they are just born. Then if they had committed a sin, then they can be put in hell or heaven. Or they have to go through whatever they go through. How did it all happen? Your God is impartial. Then why did he do this to these children? He asked this question. Obviously, there are no answers to these questions. Then Paramacharya explained, this is why we know that this child is not born for the first time. This is a new hardware, but the software is coming from somewhere else. The memory is coming, the cache, memory, everything is coming from somewhere else. Last computer crashed, so it got transferred into this. That's all it is, nothing more than that. And that is how he proved to him that reincarnation does exist. Otherwise, some children are just born, they're so intelligent. Some people are musicians, some people are great sports people, different, different kinds. Even two, three years child prodigy, we call them. Truly, they're all bringing their memories, their abilities, their skills, talents, even instincts, all from their previous lives. So we are a bundle of all that we have been so far. This is not the first time we have come. And very nice, a poet said, birth is not the beginning and death is not the end. It's a transition. So this is the truth of life and death. And this our Nachiketa knows thoroughly. And now what he wants to know, I don't want to keep coming back again and again, get into another hardware, another computer, and then again go through this, again go to a hell or heaven. Is that all through life is? Or is there a way to get rid of all this and escape this, coming back, going again, coming back, going? What is that? Is there something? He doesn't even say, I want to escape this. He simply says, there are people who are doubtful about it. Can you please tell me whether such a thing exists as this? And that is the precisely the third question where he says, Yeyam prate vachikitsa manushye asti iti eke nayam asti iti chaike etad vidyam anushishta stvayaham varanam esha varastrutiyaha This is we saw yesterday. That about which all humans are confused, they have doubts, whether it exists or it does not exist. Means after the birth and death and all the heavens and hells are finished, is there something that exists? Do we exist beyond that or we don't exist? That is the question he is asking. This vidya, this knowledge, anushishtam, you give me, tvayaham, give me, varana mesha, this is the vara, varastritiya, third one, third boon that I am asking you for. Now starts the drama. Our yama is not wanting to give it away, this highest of the knowledge, just like that. I told you yesterday, na prashantaya, na putraya, ashishyaya punahava datavyam. Don't give it to those who are not of peaceful mind. Don't give it to 
people who are not your disciples. Don't give it to who was not your own child. It means, don't give it to somebody who does not have the eligibility for it. Who may squander it away, throw it away. Don't give it to them. Otherwise, they will waste this knowledge. So, Yama is also a guru. Now, Shishya is the Nachiketa. And the question he has asked is very, very critical, crucial question. Because knowing this, you get to know everything. This is the master key to the entire life's mystery. Therefore, Yama is now testing Yachiketa. So, what does he say? First, he says, Devai Ratrapi Vichikitsitam Pura Nahi Suvigneyam Anuresha Dharmaha Anyam varam nachiketo vrinishwa ma moparod sihi atimasru jainam. So, what is the meaning? He says, Deva, all gods also, Atra, there, Api, they also are confused. Vichikit sitam means they are all having doubts. Since old times, Pura, this is not a new issue. From long, long time, even gods are having doubts about this there. And Nahi suvigneyam. This is not easily understood. Suvignya, vig, vignyam is to be known. Suvignyam easily understood. It is not easily understood. Why? Anuresha dharmaha, this knowledge is very subtle like the atom, anu. That subtle it is. Very difficult to understand this knowledge. So, why you are a small boy after all? You ask for things that is, suits your age. So, he says, Anyam varam nachiketa vrunishwa. Ask me for some other boon nachiketa. Ma Uparotsi, Ma Uparotsi, don't pester me. Ma Atisrujayana means, give it up, don't ask me about this. Give it up. And instead, ask me for something else, which may be more useful to you as a boy. You may want a phone, that time there was no phone, but then anything else that will please you, ask for that. Because anyway, gods are also confused about it, nobody knows it since old times, why do you want to know it? It is unnecessary. But you, you see, when, when we tell the children, don't go there, that's precisely where the children want to go. Don't do that, that's precisely what they want to do. Don't say that, that's precisely they will go and speak. I'm telling you, don't tell anyone, that's precisely they'll go and tell everyone. So our Nachiketa is also a child after all, but he's not an ordinary child. So Yama is saying, why do you bother about that? It's not to be known, it's not known by so many people. And even if I teach you, it's very difficult to understand, it's abstract mathematics, forget it. You ask something which is of your age and suits your requirements. Obviously, Nachiketa does not seem to have been convinced by this Yama's uh, uh, thing. So what, our, what this our Nachiketa replies to Yama, look at his reply. Devayatrapi vijikit sitam kila those who understand Sanskrit, they will enjoy these shlokas. So beautiful, the way Nachiketa uses the same logic back on Yama, gives back in the same coin. You said, Devai Raitrapi Vichikitsitam Kila. About this, the Devas only are confused, you are telling. And also you said, Tomcha mrutyo yat na sugyeya matta. Mrutyo you just now said. What? Na sugyeyam. This is not possible to know easily. Atha, you just now said that. So Yama would have thought good that this boy has understood. No point in following this. But what does he say next? He says, Vakta cha asya tvaag drugnyo na labhyo. Tvaag drug, like you, another vakta of teacher, I will not find again. Na anyo varas tulya etasya kaschid. Also, there is, cannot be any other boon equivalent to this boon. That is Nachiketa's argument. Just now you said nobody knows it. It's very difficult to understand. Therefore, don't ask your telling. But I'm asking you this. When, because nobody knows it, just now you said, and you know it. Therefore, I will not find another teacher of this truth other than you. And I don't think any boon on earth can be so unique as this because nobody knows it. It is a special thing to know this. Everything else, everybody knows it or gets it somehow. This, nobody can get it unless you teach me. And therefore, I won't find a teacher like you. Nor I think there can be any boon 
that will match this boon of the truth of our existence. That is our Nachiketa's logic. Yama ups the offer. What is he saying? Listen, Nachiketa, you are a very young boy, you have not seen life, you don't know what are the ups and downs of life, what are the things that are required in life. You need money, you need some safety, you need security, you need some you know, family, you need relationships, you need some position. You are too young to know that all these things are needed. Therefore, you are asking something very, very impractical. Let me teach you what all you require in life. And therefore, Yama is telling him, Shatayushaha, Putra Pautran Vrunishwa, Bahun Pashun, Hasti Hiranya Mashwan, Bhumer Mahadayatanam Vrunishwa, Swayamcha Jeeva Sharado Yavadichasi. So his offer is that coming now. He says, listen, Nachiketa, Shatayush Putra Pautran Vrunishwa. Ask me, Vrunishwa, ask me for what? Shatayusha, hundreds of years old, hundred years old, they should live, hundred years, Shatayush. Who? Your son and your grandsons. Putra Pautran, who live hundred years. So long they will live. Bahun Pashun, all kinds of animals. You want cows, you want buffaloes, you want uh, other kind of cattle, Loma Sham Pashubihi, with all kinds of hairy animals like sheep and goat. Elephants, Hasti, Hiranyam, Ashwan. Elephants, gold and horses. Ask me, I shall grant you all these things. And what else? Bhumi, Mahat Ayatanam, great land, lot of land I will grant you, which you can rule all by yourself. Ask for that. Also, Swayamcha Jiva, Sharado, Yavadichasi. Also, you can live as many Sharada, as many winters as you want. As long as you want, you live. Ask me all these things. Again, he looks at uh, Nachiketa's face. He is not convinced. So, Yama continues to increase the offer. Now, what is the next offer? He says, looks at Nachiketa, sees this Nachiketa fellow does not seem to be convinced. So, let me say more. And he says, Etat tulyam yadi manyase varam vrunishva vittam chirajivikamcha mahabhumau nachiketas tvamedhi kamanam tva kamabhajam karomi. So, he increases the offer. He says, this is what I thought you would like it. Uh, children, grandchildren who live for hundred years and horses and gold and elephants and all kinds of animals that you may require. And also I will give you a lot of land that you can rule and enjoy. Apart from that, I will give you the boon that you can live as long as you want because I am only going to pick you up at the end, but I will not come. You live as long as you want. Nachiketa is not convinced. So now he says, Etat tulyam, equivalent to whatever I have said. If you think there, are, there is something else, you don't like these things, you want something else. Manya Sevaram, you think of any other boon that is equivalent or even better than this, Vrnishwa, ask me. Vittam, more wealth you want. Chirajivikamcha, or live forever, never die. Keep continuing in this body for a very, very long time. Till the laya, till the, till the dissolution, till the pralaya, you keep living. Do you want like that? Then Mahabhumo, even more land I'll give. In fact, the whole earth I am ready to give you. Nachiketas Tvamedi, it will be under your control. I'll give you so much of land and kingdom. Kama naam twa, kama bajam karomi and all the other desires which we may not be able to imagine right now but there might be more. Kama bajam karomi, I will make sure that you enjoy all those things. Everything comes to you. So it's like an open blank check he has given to Nachiketa. Withdraw whatever you want. Whatever you want, write and withdraw. Nobody is going to object. This is, Nachiketa is still not convinced. Look at the plight of Yama. He is looking at his face. Take this. Nachiketa is standing like a stone. No expressions. Again, he increases the offer. And this is even more funny because he says, Ye ye kama durlabha matya loke sarvan kaman chandatah prathayaswa ima ramah saratah saturya nahi drusha lambaniya manushyaihi abhir mat pattabhi paricharayaswa Nachiketo maranam ma anuprakshihi. See, the offer is so, so tempting now, like nobody can refuse this. And what he says, ye ye kama durlabha martya loke. On this earth, there are certain desires which cannot be fulfilled because they are not available. This is what, in a hotel, you go and ask for whatever is there on the menu, you will be served. You can't ask for more than that, that is on the menu. 
so you have to bring it from another hotel and they have to feed you but which will be who will serve you like this i will give you whatever kama chandata prarthaswa make a list chandata means make a list of the entire thing because you are young boy you may not be able to remember everything take some time make a good list of everything that you think you will you would like to have that may not be available on earth and prarthaswa ask me for all that and example he gives what is not available on earth since you are a young boy you don't know the pleasures of women wine and things like that wealth so let me teach you a little he is polluting the mind of poor nachiketa by tempting him with things which is beyond his age he says ima rama rama sarathah sturya he said all the from the swarga loka rama means all these um, apsaras menaka rambha urvashi of that class apsaras i will bring saratha on beautiful chariots and saturiya playing musical instruments means they are very talented and skilled also they'll keep you entertained all the time very beautiful damsels from the apsara is the idea that beyond the earth whatever are there above i will bring that also beautiful damsels will sing and dance and play instruments for you and abhir mat pratta abhir all these who i am bringing from there which i am offering to you paricharya swa get yourself serviced by them beautiful most beautiful people will come and do all this service to you five star seven star treatment at home customized you don't even have to go till outside to get it everything will be done at your foot doorstep i'll give you all this but nachiketa maranam manu prakshi don't ask me about this business of death other than you ask me anything i'm ready to give if you can't think of it because you're a small boy you don't know how much is required to lead a happy life pleasurable life let me tell you a little more and he tells i will give you those also and if it is beyond earth i will bring it from heaven and give it to you but nachiketa don't ask me about what happens after death what goes on after that don't ask me that so yama is telling this is why i love nachiketa anybody by now would have fallen for the temptations first level not enough okay second level third level nobody would have stayed back you know what are these huge business people doing expanding their empires and wealth what is the what is the reason behind all that these are the reasons they want to enjoy the wealth pleasures of the world and they want to have the best name they want to be the most powerful people everything should be there at their fingertips whole world should bow down to them these are the kind of ambitions people think so if you think you compare this person with the topmost businessman on the earth or the topmost politi- politician nachiketa says i don't want all these things yama is offering him on a platter you don't even have to work hard all your life you sit in your place everything will come to you nachiketa finally says this yama is simply wasting time so let me speak otherwise he'll keep increasing the offer and simply is wasting my time his time so he speaks now and look at what he speaks shobhava martyasya yadanta kaitat sarvendriyanam jaryanti tejaha api sarvam jeevitam alpameva tavaiva vaha tavanrutya geete shobhava i have a doubt whatever you are telling shwa means tomorrow whether they will be there or not i have a doubt today i may have all this but tomorrow when i die some day i will die 10000 years later i will die that time that time what will happen he is thinking i have doubts of my own shobha bhava martyasya whatever you are telling all this i have my doubts about all these things so mrutyu ultimately yat antake tat you are antaka antaka means the one who ends everything so he is saying oh dear lord of death i have my own doubts about all your offers because at the end of it all you are there i cannot escape you i may enjoy for 10000 years after 10000 years when you will come again to pick me up so you are there at the end of it antaka the word he used is antaka you are the, you are the one who puts end to end to everything finally all pleasures also are put an end to by you you alone and whatever this you told martyasya whatever the human beings can enjoy you have just spoken about sarvendriyanam jaryanti tejaha he takes away the vigor vitality and power of all the senses because of continuous usage of the car what will happen at the end 
the car will become uh, bad in the sense it won't function properly because of the over usage anything that is used too much becomes weak becomes useless at the end so he says you are telling me live long enjoy wealth uh, women wine everything i understand but i have observed this he is an observant fellow that's why sir is a very very observant boy he observed his father then he came three days he sat observed and thought what all i should ask this yama for and now he carefully planned his third boon and in the third boon he has decided to ask a very important question and he says whatever you are telling i know at the end of it all the indriyas will be wasted away that's why our bhartri hari says what does he say trishna na jirna vayam eva jirna our desires don't end we end kalo na yati vayam eva yati we don't spend time time spends us bhogo na bhukta bhoga na bhukta vayam eva bhukta we don't enjoy the world and senses senses in the world enjoy us tapo na tapta vayam eva tapta when we desire for all these things desires are not getting vanished we are only vanishing we are only suffering we think we are enjoying but we are suffering it's a sweet poison it is sweet nevertheless it is poison it will that is what has happened to all the people who ran behind worldly pleasures they all ended up in very bad body all kinds of diseases you know so many diseases were not even there 100 years ago today diabetes hypertension uh, transmission that diseases where are these coming from it's coming from then why did this corona virus come from where did it come from came from they say bats who ate those bats somebody ate it that's why it came so it means somebody thought eating bat is very tasty to satisfy the jiva rasana they went and ate whatever they felt like today see the whole world economies are under people are dying they can't even see their kitten kin they are buried away from their own children they cannot even do the final rites what a painful situation the high thousands of migrant worker lakhs of them nowhere to go economies are collapsing around the world just imagine what somebody's habit or love for eating bats has done to the world some one person we are so bound that's why i say vyashti is the part of samashti is the part of srishti is the part of parameshti each is the limb of other individual is the limb of society society is the limb of this nature or the uh, creation creation is the limb of god everybody suffers he one suffers and somebody who could not control his tongue or her tongue went about eating whatever came their way without thinking twice and look at where where they have taken the world to you may say i am a vegetarian why should i suffer you suffer because you are part of the society you are a part of this world so everybody's happiness is your happiness and everybody's sorrow is your sorrow even though they are not directly related to you but somehow we are all bound together we are all sitting in the same boat just because the hole is in one end of the boat it does not mean the people of the other end of the boat are safe the boat will sink so everybody has to work together to, to plug the hole whoever made the hole forget that that will address later first thing is go and plug the hole instead of arguing who made the hole who made, boat will sink so this is the idea sarvendriyanam jarayanti teja how much more movies you'll watch how many foods you will eat how many places you will go how many things you will drink and enjoy how long at the end of it your bodies will become feeble weak all your indriyas will lose all the vigor and vitality you will be a dead wood no point no point who is saying this a young boy is telling it to who to yama after when after yama tempted with him, with him with all kinds of offerings he says what i don't want all this i have my own doubts about all that you are saying i have not noticed that people at the end become very weak because they enjoy too much of the world and then they suffer so you are all telling this fine but i am not interested and then he says what api sarvam jivitam alpameva and also i know all life is short only short means i live for 1000 years somebody has a boon to live for 1000 years ask him at the end of 999 years he will say i have hardly lived at all just 999 years i have lived if only i had another 1000 years the one who is dying who says i am ready to die if only i can get a little more and little more and little more so he says this life i have seen yama 
this is asarvam jivitam alpam eva, all life is short only. The one who lives for 30 years also feels he is short lived, one who lives for 90 years also feels he is short lived. Even if we give thousand years to live, he will still be short of life. And he would like to live more. He is not willing to give up the body. This I am talking about the average person, a fool or a very worldly person. I am not talking about sadhus, sannyasis and uh, realized people. This is the general thing that he is saying. The 99.99 percent. So he said, therefore, very beautiful, I love his uh, audacity. He says, Tava eva vahaha tava nritya gite. Therefore, keep your dance and music to yourself. You dance, you sing, you enjoy. Don't tell me all these things. You tell me what I'm asking you for. Why are you going round and round? See, he's getting irritated. Nachiketa. Because his shraddha, his shraddha is so deep in what he wants to learn, even to Yama he can give back. So you can imagine what must have been Yama's face. 